Hey what's up everyone, in this video I'm going to take one of these Acurel 50 foot exterior post boxcar kits and make it look something like this. So what I've been doing is I've been creating some fictional leasing companies for my layouts and this one's going to be late night leasing. I've had some custom decals made up, LNLX, starting at 1001 and moving upward. Now I bought 10 of these kits straight from Acurel and I bought them as data only which means there's only the data marks on here. There's no road name or road number or anything like that. And so with these custom decals, I'm gonna put, uh, put them on these and I'll have 10 fictional leasing company box cars at the end of this project. So the look I'm going for is something that's been on the rails for a few years, um, long enough to make it look grungy like this and have a faded roof, but not so decrepit that there's rust falling off of every square inch of the car. So something that's lightly weathered, nothing too crazy, um, there's some marks that are from opening and closing doors, and little scratches, and there's some, there is some rust on the trucks and things like that. But again, nothing too crazy. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. And so we're going to start with this one here, and we're going to make it look something like that. Here's where I'm at so far. Uh, what I've done is apply the decals on each side of the rail car, and also on the ends. And I also cemented the doors in place on both sides. And I also gave a dull coat over the entire thing. One, to get rid of the gloss from the decals, and another just to give it a good base for when I start weathering this thing up. So the very next step is to take care of the roof. Now here's the other rail car that I've already done. As you can see, the roof is uh, rusted, the paint's all chipped off of it and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the entire uh, side of the shell, just leave the top exposed. And I'm just going to spray it down with um, just basically a silver enamel paint. Um, kind of looks like shiny metal. And then after that, I'll do subsequent layers of weathering on the top. And then when the top's done, then I'll move on to the side. So next step is to get this taped up, and we'll be right back. Here I have the shell all masked up, just some painter's tape and some copy paper. And I'm going to hit it up with this tester's extreme lacquer here. This is Diamond Dust 1830. And I'm going to head over to the spray booth and give it a nice uh, couple coats. All right, so now that the top is painted, I also sprayed a thin layer of dull coat over the top of it just to help the next layer stick. And what I'm going to do now is make it look something like this here, where the, I, I primed it with like this silver color to basically simulate the original uh, steel color you know, the steel metal that's underneath all the paint. And then I'm going to do a chipping effect um, like this here. And in order to accomplish that, I'm doing the hairspray trick. So basically, I'm taking this ultra fine hairspray. This is Tresemme. Uh, hold number is three, in case you need that info. Um, this is a giant can, so it's going to go a long way. I've got a lot of cars to do. And essentially, I'm going to spray two um, thin coats of hairspray over the top and let it sit for a good 10 minutes. Um, then, after that, I'm going to apply uh, a layer of this oxide color that I mixed up. So this is as close as I could get to Acurel's oxide color. It's close enough, it doesn't have to be exact because I'm gonna be weathering it heavily. Um, in order to mix this up, in case you're interested, um, I did have to kind of fiddle with it though, but the uh, formula I came up with was four parts of XF64, get that focused, uh, five parts of XF9, and two parts is XF7. So that got me to this with a little bit of manipulation here and there, um, just trial and error. Uh, but in case you wanted the info, there it is. And so I'm going to spray that over the top, get a nice, um, you know, uh, even coat along the top here, probably take a couple of different uh, thin applications to do that. Let that sit for another 10-15 minutes and then uh, I'll do the chipping effect which is basically you take a brush or a toothpick or a cotton swab or whatever and you uh, get it damp and just start scrubbing away at the top. And what that's going to do is it's going to eventually start wetting up the hairspray underneath and that's going to start making it flake off and chip off. And so I'm going to do that next. Um, just wanted to explain the whole thing before I go into it. Um, and then, yeah, so it came out pretty good, I think. Uh, I used a different gray on this one. 
Um, I wish I had used a brighter gray like this. So we'll see how this one comes out. But um, I think the effect is, um, is quite nice. So enough talk, let's, let's jump into it. All right, so when spraying the hairspray, you wanna keep it about an arm's length away, just like this, at least this is the way I learned it. And just give a few little quick passes just like that. Let that set up, let that kind of dry up a little bit. And then do that again. And then you don't want to put it on too heavy because then when you're applying the brush with the, the damp brush, um, it'll just come off too quick. So um, the really light coats is is really the, uh, the best way to go because then you can really ease into your weathering that way. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do it one more time. That looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit up for about 10 minutes and that'll give me enough time to set up my airbrush and then we'll be back to uh, spray the top. Okay, so now that the top is all set here, um, I actually made a little bit of an oops in this section over here. Some paint got dribbled on there and it made a kind of a blotch, but hey, that's okay. I'll roll with it. It's going to be weathered up anyway, so that'll just add to the uh, to the randomness. Uh, so the key to this is just to get your brush or whatever you're using damp. So I'm just going to dip in the water and I'm going to get most of the water off on a paper towel here. And then just start brushing away at it, stabbing it and stuff like that. It will take a little bit before it starts to come off, but uh, it's already starting to come off there. I'm going to see if you can zoom in there so you can see how it's getting the chipping effect. And you can just keep gently going at it until you achieve the look you want. And then when you get there, you stop. And then just dull coat it, and then you're good to go. So I'm going to finish up the rest of the top of this thing, and um, yeah, we'll go on from there. So as I'm going through here, I figured I'd also mention, um, once you put down the acrylic paint on top of the, the hairspray, you have, you have some time um, before, you, before it doesn't start to come off anymore. Uh, so I found that, I mean, I wait about 10 minutes or at least about the time it takes for me to clean my airbrush and then it's it's pretty good to go by then. But you can let it go 20 minutes, half hour later, and it'll still come off. The longer you wait, the more scrubbing you'll have to do. But I did a little experiment um, one time, and I waited like an hour, and it did start to come off. It, it was harder to get off, but it did start to come off. I did have to use a little bit more water. Um, but you have some time, so if you have to like, you know, um, go take care of something real quick or use the restroom or something. Um, you don't have to worry about being too quick about it. So you can take your time and getting the look you want. Um, so that's really nice about that technique. And then I found that from all the research that I've done on this technique, uh, the finer the hairspray you can get, the better. Uh, I guess the globier it is, the more it's just going to flake off right away. So you're not going to get that fine sort of detailed chipping look to it. And I also take the like other different types of brushes here. Like this is more of like a stipple brush. And really kind of go at it if I want to get stuff off real quick. And then uh, just kind of play with it, you know, um, until you get the look you want. Okay, so I am at the point where I'm pretty happy with where it's at. So I'm going to just let this dry up and dull coat it, and then I can start taking the mask off and start weathering the sides. Now I'm not gonna weather this anymore at this point. Um, I will be adding some washes uh, to simulate grime and dirt and some more rust and things like that. But for this point, I'm pretty happy with it right here. Um, I'll do the washes over the whole thing when I get to those particular steps. And yeah, so next step, dull coat it and then take off the mask. So now that the mask is removed, we can see it's starting to come together a little bit here. 
Um, the next step I'm going to do is give it a little bit of a fade so like it's been sun bleached, so to speak. And to do that, I'm going to use this XF57. Now, I could use white, but I want it to be more of like a warmer tone over the overall look of this car. And this is kind of a warm color. It just needs to be a light color um, just to kind of fade it and look like it's been sun bleached a little bit. And I'm only going to concentrate around the upper portions of the car. And the lower portion is going to be more grimy and rusty and things like that. So um, next step is to load this into the airbrush, mostly isopropyl alcohol with a few drops of this just to dilute it. And um, we'll get to spraying that around. Okay, so... Hopefully you can see this on camera here. It's a lot easier to see um, in person, but there's a subtle fade from top to bottom. You can kind of see it along the edges here. Um, that's all I really wanted to do is just kind of kiss it with, um, you know, just, just a fade there. And then the next step, I'm going to apply more of a darker color along the bottom um, just to indicate the parts where there's going to be more of like a, a deeper grime and rust that is, that's going on along the bottom there. And so that's the next step. Okay, just to point out where I'll be applying the paint, um, it's going to be kind of like in the corners down here, along the bottom, um, along here where the door slides open and everything. Parts where, you know, like as water and dirt and grime comes down after rainfalls and everything, it kind of collects down here. So that's basically what I'm going to simulate. Um, again, this car is not really meant to be weathered heavily, just that it's it looks like it's been on the rails for, you know, a few years, so... Um, that's where I'll be concentrating the color, and the color, by the way, I'm going to be using is XF9, which is called Hull Red, which is one of my favorite colors. Um, it's a good base to put down before I put down more darker, grimy colors. Um, I feel like that's a good color for that. So, um, that's what I'll be doing next. Next step I'm going to do here is to take some of this burnt umber oil paint, mix it with a little odorless mineral spirits to make like a wash, and then we're going to basically brush it down the side of the car just to give an overall grunginess to it, uh, just another layer of grunge. And this is just really quick. Don't want it to be too dark, um, just to add a Additional layer. And that'll seep into all the creases and everything, all the corners. I'm just going to do this, oh, like one or two times uh, per side, just to give that little extra layer of grunge there. And then we'll move on to the next color. But I'll probably end up sealing this before I do that, because I don't want to... If I'm going to do another another oil wash, um, I don't want the next wash to wash this one away. So we'll have to seal it between, uh, between washes. So next I'm just going to take some burnt umber acrylic paint here, and I'm just going to make some marks along the side of the car to simulate when the door opens and closes, it scrape against the ribs of the car and that can leave scratches and dents and over time that can rust. So I'm just gonna make some marks to kind of simulate that. Nothing over the top, just enough to say, oh well, it looks like this door's been open and closed a number of times um, and there's some scrapes on it. So next up is another oil wash, this time using Burnt Sienna. And this gives more of a fresher rust type of look than a deep grime like the um, Burnt Umber did. Um, and this is going to go along the top of the rail car, just to give it some color up here. Okay, so one more wash I'm going to do over this whole car, and I'm going to be using Raw Umber. And just because there's a there's still a little bit of a shine on the roof here, you can see it's still kind of shiny. So this will tone that down, 
And also, I'm just gonna do along the sides just a quick wash of this as well. Just an overall kind of dirt color. Uh, nothing really rusty or anything, just kind of overall grime. So uh, I think this will be the last wash for this one. And then we'll move on to the, the bottom and the trucks. So I've dull coated the entire car here. And the next step uh, that I'm going to do is add a little bit of shine to where some of the metal would be. Uh, so some of the paint would have chipped off and there's metal showing underneath. And to do that, it's just a little trick. Use a number two pencil. Um, I just have a number two uh, mechanical pencil here. Same thing. And then what you do is you find the edges that you want to highlight and you just gently rub the graphite across the edge. Smooth it out with your finger. And that'll give the uh, illusion that there's some shiny metal sticking out there. So you can't see it in every light, but once in a while you'll see that little glimmer. Um, oh, this piece I have to glue back on a little bit here. It's coming off. Um, and then, yeah, so I'll show you right here. This hopefully will be apparent on camera. But you can see that little bit of shine, um, just that little glimmer of sunlight hitting that metal. Um, is the effect uh, going for there. So I'm just going to go over the entire car. Not every single par part, um, just little pits that stick out that I think could use it. And then we'll be on to um, the bottom part. Okay, now it's on to painting the bottom portion, which is the base, the trucks, and the wheels. Now the AccuRail kits come with um, like a metal slab, so you can use it as weight. Um, I just hit it up with a gray primer just so it doesn't rust over time. And then... They also come with Delrin wheels, and I'm replacing those with these Intermountain 33-inch wheel sets. And then the trucks I just have on these little alligator clips on skewers just to make it easier uh, when I'm painting them in the booth. And then, of course, the bottom I'll hit up with uh, paint as well. And for the color, I'm going to mix up this XF9 and XF1, so hull red and black. And I'll just mix it up till I like the color, um, probably a little bit more red than black. And that gives me a nice little grungy color, almost the same color as the base of the shell after the weathering. So it should tie in quite nice. And I'll spray up all those. And then for these, I'll just put some sort of like burnt umber or sort of dark brown-ish color inside here. And then um, those will look good. And then I'll put it all together and attach it to the rail car. So on to the paint. Okay, so here is the result of the trucks being painted. It's a little dark, but that's okay. Um, it kind of matches up to the lower portion of the shell where all the grime is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of spray upwards and over from the side a little bit lighter color just to kind of brighten it up and also to simulate some dust and stuff. And what I'm going to do is use this color here, which is a mixture of all of these. So it's one part XF9, one part 80, one part 52, and a third part XF1, which is black. So all these colors mixed together in almost equal parts comes out to this, which is pretty close to my reference photo that I have here. Uh, focus on this. And so what I'm going to simulate is kind of this color here, a little bit of this, and then just kind of shoot it up at the trucks like that. Um, this is probably a little bit darker than the, what this dries as, so I may need to add a little bit more of the hull red, uh, but we'll see. Uh, I'll give it a shot of just this mix right here, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I have dull coated these because I like the way the base color is right now. And what I'm going to do now is do some more oil washes. So I'm going to do a burnt umber as like a general overall wash. And then burnt sienna for some of the parts where I want to add a little bit more of like a rust type color. So in the springs and maybe on the, the bearing caps here. And so that'll be the next step. Okay, so here's the result of the oil washes. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but in person it, the colors kind of pop out a little bit more. Uh, so I'm going to let this dry. And then the last step I'm going to do is use that number two pencil again and just highlight some of the edges where um, there'd be some, some shiny metal from rubbing or whatever happens to happen. Uh, and that'll be the last step for the trucks. 
All right, so on to the wheels, and I'm just going to use this little micro brush, and I'm going to mix up some hull red and black brown together. Uh, I figured these two mixed together look, should look pretty good. And then I'll just take the brush, swipe it around the wheels, and we should be good to go. All right, so here is the finished car up on the layout under the lights. And the one thing I did add at the end were some Katie couplers, and I just gave a little bit of a burnt umber color to those just to kind of make them look a little grungy. But overall, pretty happy with this. You can see there is a little bit of a difference between the two. This one has a more of a richer color to it, uh, but that's okay. I like the variations. And with these two down, I only have eight more to go. So i um, going to be chugging along here. Uh, but yeah, pretty happy with the result. Again, it's not too weathered. It's just kind of grungy with a faded roof on it. So none of these are going to be weathered really heavily. Um, they've all been on the rails for about the same period of time, just um, being delivered to different parts of the country. So um, this is the look I'm going after. And so hopefully you found some useful tips or tricks out of this and you enjoyed it. And that's all for now. So as always, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you next time.